Today I am going to be teaching you guys the absolute best way to utilize MK677 for your lab wrap. First, let's get some things out of the air. I am not a doctor. Do not do anything without your doctor's supervision. This, this video is all for informational and educational purposes only and for lab rats that have some questions. Now, the first thing I want to clear the air of is I often see MK677 lumped into the family of SARMs or people call it a SARM. It's actually a growth hormone secretagogue, so a tire, an entirely different family of compounds. It's just often lumped into them because they're usually sold side by side and they work very synergistically together. Now, where can your lab rats get MK677 or get your hands on it? Uh, I would recommend down in the bio below, Half Wicked Labs or halfwicked.com for all the sourcing. And there, will also be, and there will also be a discount code of Olympia running at checkout up until the very end of Olympia, which is on that Sunday. Why would someone choose MK677 over your traditional HGH, right? Because that's what we're comparing is many of the benefits you are gonna get from MK677 are damn near identical to that of traditional HGH. So improvement to lean muscle tissue, drop in body fat percentage, better healing of ligaments and tendons, better overall recovery, better sleep, an increase in appetite, usually for a lot of people, which could be both beneficial and detrimental, kind of depends what you're trying to do. But the list goes on and on. Essentially what we're getting at is the fountain of youth. There's a reason majority of uh, performance athletes, celebrities, people around the world are either on some form of HGH or 677 or a combination of both. What makes MK677 better than HGH? I wouldn't say it's better. They're gonna accomplish pretty much the same thing. I would say if you're going for an IFBB pro and you wanna be one of the biggest people on the planet, you're gonna have to go further than just 677. You're gonna have to do insane amounts of HGH. But if we're talking an average dose of HGH, and then an average dose of 677. 677 is going to be such a massive difference in price, and I'm talking so much cheaper to get MK677 than it would HGH. MK677 is also going to be oral majority of the time, which makes administration way easier because I do know there's a lot of people that have needle phobia. People are gonna notice a difference, I would say very similar time frame. so one's not necessarily gonna be much faster than the other. So essentially what you're gaining is just more money in your pocket or that you're able to spend on other parts of your lab rat cycle because HGH, if Trust me, you will be spending way more than majority of people could ever fathom paying or afford, especially the people that are in bodybuilding. So 677 is just such a much better option, unless, like I just said, you are going to the top of the top IFBB. I'll touch on cycle length just because we talked about when you'll start to notice results. Don't think of any growth hormone secreted gog if we're talking traditional HGH. Do not treat it like a traditional cycle of the eight to 12 weeks doing your PCT. That's another thing I should also touch on while I'm here. PCT is not required if only utilizing 677 because it will not suppress natural testosterone levels. So that is a huge benefit to like, let's say a 677 only cycle. But the benefit from the cycle is going to come, I would say around the four to six month mark and then cycling off just to avoid insulin sensitivity issues, allow the body to kind of resensitize to that compound so that you're able to utilize the most of it. Because otherwise, placebo happens no matter what you're doing. If you're taking recreational stuff off the street, if you're taking certain supplements, if you're training a certain way, the body is very smart and it adapts. So what happens is you either need a higher dosage or you need to come off. So the optimal time for a cycle, I'd say, is in that four to six month mark with the dosage of 10 to 30 milligrams daily. Now for my lab rat, I personally found, I've made many videos on this, but my opinion changes ever so slightly from time to time, but kind of roots back to the same thing. At 20 milligrams is when I ultimately felt my best. 30 started to feel where it's approaching a little bit too high. And what I mean is more money was just being wasted down the drain or flushed down the toilet because at 40 milligrams daily, 50 milligrams daily, I wasn't noticing any difference in anything other than I was going through the supply faster. And then also the more you ramp up the dosage, the closer you're going to get into the side effect range. 20 milligrams was the sweet spot daily, uh, either dosed at night, in the morning, midday, 
It doesn't really matter because the half-life is going to be long enough where you only need to dose once per day. And while we're talking about dosing, let's also jump into the side effects because that's obviously, people don't only wanna know the benefits, people wanna know what could potentially go wrong. And also while we're, while we're talking about cycle length and when to take it, this fits in perfect. So the side effects people could experience is bloating or more water retention. They can feel a drowsiness and then usually and most common is going to be an increase in hunger. And I'm talking just the most insatiable, hungry you have ever been. You will be ravenous, which as I said in the beginning of the video, could either be good or bad, depending on what you're trying to do. Obviously, if you wanna be in a caloric deficit and diet, it's gonna be really hard to implement MK677 just because you're going to already be in a hungry state where you wanna eat everything. And then making yourself more hungry is going to equate in a bunch of different problems and you probably cheating on your diet. But here's the interesting part. So if you wanna utilize 677, and avoid that hunger side effect. I don't like to call it a side effect because some people really want an increase in appetite. Like for instance, myself, I used to eat all the time, but now as I've gotten older, I, it's very hard for me to eat any amount of calories compared to what I used to. So having an increase in appetite would actually benefit me immensely. If you want to avoid that though, just dose at night before bed because what happens is as the 677 hits your system, it tells your pituitary gland to release more growth hormone. It also increases ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. And that is what is increasing or spiking that hunger just to the insane limits. And that's it, that's how you avoid that one. Just dose at night if that is something you're trying to avoid. The other one, which is the bloating or water retention. I only noticed it when I got into the higher dosages with my lab rat, and then it would usually subside or flare up more when there was some type of mineral imbalance. So between your potassium intake, your water intake, and your sodium intake, those are the three that are going to utilize how much your body is storing of water, what it's getting rid of, and having 677 just kind of implemented into that mix exacerbates it so much that it's throwing it all out of whack and it's causing your body to retain fluid. So if you're noticing that for your lab rat, you could either back off on the dosage or more importantly is get those minerals in check to where they're in an adequate range. So the water, potassium, and sodium. And the third and final side effect, which is the drowsiness or feeling more sluggish, tired, is often when it's dosed at night to avoid that hunger side effect, this is the drawback, is you get such deep sleep that you wake up almost in a REM cycle, if that makes sense. I, I don't know how many of you out there that are watching the video have slept so deep before where you woke up and you felt kind of sluggish or drowsy, you felt tired, even though you got an adequate amount of sleep or an amount of sleep that you thought would have completely recovered you where you'd be full of energy the next day. What's happening is you're ending up sleeping so deep that your body is still waking up tired. My lab rep never personally experienced that one. The only side effect out of those that I ever experienced was a little bit of water and bloating when my minerals were out of balance and then the dosage was way higher. And then of course the increase in hunger. One of the amazing parts of 677 is not just how amazing it is standalone, but how synergistically it can work with almost anything. If we're talking traditional anabolics, so VAR, TEST, Winnie, TREN, that whole list, you know, Masteron, and then you also, the pe other peptides, BPC-157, TB-500, CJC, even human growth hormone, or in the SARMs realm, YK11, RAD, LGD. It can be paired with literally anything, which makes it, in my opinion, just one of the best things on the market for sports performance, bodybuilders, even people that are getting older in age and maybe more susceptible to injury, or going through just what we all are as day by day goes on as getting older. And what I can tell you is there's way more people using it and utilizing it than you even know of. So once again, if you guys need any sourcing for your lab rats, check out the link in my bio, halfwickedlabs.com, or you can go to the full source list, which is halfwicked.com. If you have any more questions, my Instagram page is also always open. I try to answer as many DMs as I can on there, but it's Half Wicked Labs. I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you learned something. Make sure to leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Leave your comments. Leave your thoughts on MK677 in the comments down below, and I will catch you guys in the next one.